Good morning, everyone, and Shabbat Shalom. We are thankful yet again for another opportunity to stand before you, an opportunity to teach. Uh, we're so thankful for how God blesses us, uh, how he is personal to us. Uh, he leads us and guides us in our own life and how he blesses us with teachings and a blessing to the people because that's how God deals with us. And that's, I know what our calling is uh, when it comes to how he teaches us because we want to share the things that he teaches us. So if you would, let us all stand this morning and turn to Psalms 34. So Psalms 34. And we will read... What are we going to read at here? Do, do, do. We will read verse 11 and we'll go into 17. So Proverbs 34, verse 11. Come, you children, listen to me. Let me teach you the reverence of Hashem. Who is the man who desires life, who loves many days in order to see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of Hashem are on the righteous and, their, and his ears unto their cry. The face of Hashem is against evildoers to cut off their remembrance from the earth. Crying out and Hashem heard and delivered them out of all their distresses. Let us lift up our eyes. Hashem, Adonai, Most High, El Yon, thank you for this day that you've given us. Uh, thank you for how you've set this day apart. Uh, we recognize you as the one who sets us apart. May we continue to look to you in our lives that you would guide us. May we recognize you in our lives and we understand that that too is the reverence of God. Uh, that we would not give the credit to men, but we would give the credit to you for the blessings in our lives. Uh, for you are the one who gives and you are the one who takes away. May we look to you for all things. We understand when we have difficult times in our lives that... This too is a, or this is the opportunity to seek you, and when we have good times in our lives, this is an opportunity to praise you. Uh, may we just look for you in all things. We pray over this message that you would give us a mind that's clear, uh, words that are easy to understand, and also uh, easy to apply in our lives. We're looking for your guidance in our lives. We're looking for your blessing, uh, and we can also see your blessings in the difficult times. Uh, we lift you up on high. We do pray for the people here. We pray over this message. The God direct us, Baruch Hashem, Hallelujah, Amen. So Psalms, Psalms 34, we will start in verse 1. So of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. So what is happening? Uh, what is this about? This is a praise of David because he was afraid of his life because the, uh, the ruler in Gath, wanted to take him over because the men were saying, did not Saul conquer his 1,000s and then David his 10,000s? Okay, so he didn't take that in a good way. So he was afraid of his life. So he made himself mad. Uh, he was spitting on his beard. And, they, and then the king was like, why do you even bring him to me? He's mad. So he was released. This is what that psalm is about. This is a praise of the deliverance of God. Okay, uh, so we have Psalms 34, verse 1. Of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. I bless Hashem all the times his praise is continually in my mouth. My being shall boast in Hashem. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, make Hashem great with me and let us exalt his name together. So to exalt is room. It is to raise. Let it be high. Let it be lifted. We're going to exalt it. We're going to actively raise his name. We are going to actively rise the name. We know what name is. It's Shem. Okay. It's not just a name. What is Shem? It is reputation. It is glory. It is character. What are we doing? Help me raise his character. Help me actively raise his reputation together. If we had a title of this message this morning, and as we were talking about, and we were talking about how uh, God has blessed us and we're finding God in our lives, the title of this message is called Testify. Can you testify of God in your life and recognizing God in your life. 
So we are going to raise his reputation. We are raising his character. Let us acknowledge him in our lives. My being shall boast in Hashem. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, make Hashem great with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought Hashem and he answered me. Can anybody testify of that? I asked, I inquired, and he answered my prayer. Sometimes it's not always the way that you want it. Sometimes when you're asking God to deliver you, he does it in strange ways that you might not understand. But nevertheless, he is listening. And we'll talk about that too as we continue through this message. So, I sought Hashem and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. So that fear is Magura. Fear, terror, and I love this. The word is storehouse, granary, fright. He delivered, that is not Saul, rescued me. He saved me, he plundered, snatch away, he preserved me, he recovered me. He plundered the storehouse of my fear. All your accumulated fears, he came in and ransacked it. That's awesome. I love that. He recovered me from my fright. This is David talking about being before that king. He was terrified. So I called on God and what happened? He recovered me from everything that I was afraid of. I accumulated these fears and no one is our worst enemy more than us, correct? We sabotage ourselves. It is this mind that continues <clears throat> to ransack us. There's this mind that continues to ruin us. And then he comes in, God. God comes in and alleviates that pressure. He takes that burden. And as we continue through this message and we'll see the evidence of God and, and God uses us. That's what God does. So if you want to recognize, recognize God in your life, Look for him and the blessings that other bestow on you. That's God. So, oh, make Hashem great with me. He delivered me from all my fears. I love that. He plundered the storehouse of my fear. He broke in and took it out. God is watching. Okay, so continuing on. He rescues me. He delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor one cried out, and Hashem heard, and saved him out of all his distresses. The messenger of Hashem encamps all around those who revere him and rescues them. Oh, taste and see that Hashem is good. Baruch is the man, blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. We find security and confidence. Reverence. Hashem, you, his set apart ones, Korashim, for there is no lack to them who revere him. Young lions have lacked and been hungry, but those who seek Hashem lack not any goodness. So I was thinking about this this week, and I see the connection between where we are now and where they were then. There was a lot of dependence on God, and I'm talking about a lot more dependence on God than what we have now. I'm not saying we are less in it, but this is what I want you to get. We can go to the grocery store and get meat. You can go to the grocery store and get your vegetables. They prayed for rain. If you didn't have rain, if you didn't have sunshine, if you didn't have the right climate... You weren't eating. You were surviving. The mentality then was a lot different than what we have now. So, of course, there was a lot more dependence on God. Why is that? Because everything that we have now is easily accessible. You can easily get in your car, go to the grocery store, and get food. When's the last time you prayed for rain? So, think about that. The way that they lived then is a lot different than the way that we live now. We're no longer praying for rain. We've got it good. We've got it good. So we have to seek God in everything. So continuing on. So the messenger of Hashem encamps all around those who revere him and rescues them. Oh, taste and see that Hashem is good. I can testify of that. Baruch is the man that takes refuge in him. We find security and confidence. 
Revere Hashem, you set apart ones, for there is no lack to them who revere him. Young lions have lacks. That's talking about they have to search for their food and been hungry. And those who seek Hashem lack not any good. Come, you children, listen to me. Let me teach you the reverence of Hashem. So uh, we are going to talk about as we continue on in this, God recognizes you in two ways. Okay. God recognizes you in two ways. And what I'm talking about here is if you do righteous acts, God recognizes you, praises you, and rewards you. If you do unrighteous acts, God recognizes you and punishes you. So you can get the attention of God two ways. Just like your children. Okay, You can have positive attention and you can have negative attention when it comes to your children. Uh, when it comes to God recognizing you. So you choose, you choose. I think about my children uh, when they're disobedient, they're getting your attention, okay? They're getting your attention, but they can also get your attention other ways. So you think about that and you think about that in context with God. Now, how do we want God's positive attention? He gives us a lineup here. Come you children. You think there's, that's just by chance that he said that? Come, you children, listen to me. Let me teach you the reverence of Hashem. Now, I believe as I'm keeping it in context and, and as we are inspired to speak, reverence of God is God notices, okay? And that is gaining his respect or having his respect. That is you respect him and he recognizes you. You are getting his attention. You respect him. Okay? And when you respect him, what's the most disrespectful thing that you can do to your parents? What's the most disrespectful thing? Disobey. Not listen. Okay? Same thing. So, he says, if you want to reverence God, let me teach you the reverence of Hashem. Who is the man who desires life, who loves many days in order to see good? That's any one of us, correct? Correct? Keep your tongue from evil. That's trouble. Do not have a troublesome tongue. Your lips from speaking deceit. That's lying. Turn away from evil. Turn away from trouble and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Shalom. Peacefulness. Okay? The eyes of Hashem are on the righteous, are on the righteous and his ears unto their cry. The face of Hashem is against evildoers to cut off their remembrance from the earth. God is trying to balance out everything. Okay? So in order to do that and bring peace and righteousness to life, what does he have to do? Get rid of wickedness. Okay? Of all the things that we have done, God is righting those wrongs. So, uh, we have... We have, everyone, every single person from a child on and up, have a human desire to be recognized. Every single one of us. We want to be known. We want to be recognized. Today, and I'll tell you, TikTok, uh, Instagram, people today will do wild things to be noticed. You could say everyone wants to be famous. Everyone wants to be recognized. We want to be recognized. God is watching you, and you get his attention in two ways, like we just said. To do righteousness, we get God's attention for praise and reward. To do evil, we get God's attention for punishment. That's what it says right here. His eyes are on the righteous, the ones that want to do right. So positive and negative attention. Your children want your attention, and they learn to get it. They learn one way or the other. And if it's not corrected, and we'll talk about that too, corrected early, then we develop those habits throughout our life. And we continue to use those to get others' attentions, uh, others' attention. So kids want structure. I'm telling you, you want structure in your life. Kids want structure and security. Have you ever heard of cruising for a bruising? How many times in your life you know that you're doing wrong, I'm just going to talk about us, us in general. You know you're doing wrong and expecting the punishment of God. Are you really just wondering if he cares? <laughs> I'm not saying do evil to expect the good. I'm thinking about it like a child. You should do righteousness 
And I tell you, if you do righteousness, you get the attention of God. If you do good and you do right, you get the proper attention, the positive attention. But sometimes we test our parents, don't we? And what happens when we test our parents? We're asking for it. I think about it in context of work. And what I mean by that is there is a ground rule, okay? There are rules that are set in stone. When you sign that agreement, you are, are, you are uh, agreeing to those rules. That's the same thing with this covenant, okay? You're signing the agreement to the rules, right? Now, if you break the rules, it's not the rules' fault. It's not the person who set the rules' fault. You know the rules. If you break the rules, it is you who chose to do that. So the punishment is there because of what we have done. Okay? So if you are the one who is the punisher, don't be discouraged that you have to punish. Because the rules are set. So, I love structure. I love rules. Um, but we find often with ourselves, and this is a very humbling thing, make sure that you're standing up for what you believe in, in yourself. Okay? What I mean by that is set the example because too often I find that I do the things that I don't like. We find ourselves doing the things that we correct others for. So we need to be very humble, willing to listen. Okay, that's for me. So, he wants your attention. He wants, uh, and we are getting God's attention. So positive and negative attention, your children want your attention and they learn what gets it to fill a need. And we talked about that before. Um, we have the hierarchy of needs and one of them is just safety and security. Your kids want to know that they're safe and they're secure. We are requiring that from God also. We want to know that we are safe and secure in God. It's to fill a need. Kids want structure and security. Uh, they want to know you care enough to correct. So, continuing on. Come, you children, listen to me. Let me teach you the reverence of Hashem. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days in order to see good? This is the recognition of God. This is the reverence of God. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Deceit. Turn away from trouble and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of Hashem are on the righteous. He is watching and his ears unto their cry. The face of Hashem is against evil doers to cut off their remembrance from the earth. So positive and negative attention. Crying out and Hashem heard and delivered them out of their distresses. Hashem is near to the brokenhearted and saves those whose spirit is crushed. And we'll talk about that later when we get into one of the um, stories in the Bible. So uh, he is close to you when your heart is broken. He saves those of crushed spirit. When you're disorganized and you don't know direction, he's close. I, I love the feeling and the comfort that I get when I seek God in my trying time. And that peace that comes over you, I don't know what that sounds like to you, but it sounds like everything's going to be okay to me. Everything's going to be fine. It is always worked out. I've blessed you before. I bless you now. I'm going to continue to bless you. And that gives me peace. What did it say? He is my confidence and my security. How many times did David say, I sought refuge in you? You know what that is? That's your safe place. Where's your safe place? So, he delivered me out of all my distresses. The troubles that were yesterday, where are they now? The troubles of yesterday. Hashem is near to the brokenhearted and saves those whose spirit is crushed. Many, and if you look at that crushed, it's powder to dust. Many are the evils of the righteous, their troubles. And Hashem delivers them out of them all. Many are the troubles of the righteous. But he delivers them out of them all. Like I said, where are the troubles of yesterday? You have new troubles today. <laughs> so worry about today and today's troubles. Okay? And I tell you that there's always going to be something. But I'm also telling you that you don't want a completely peaceful life. Because it's teaching you that your life would be boring. 
You don't want a completely peaceful life. You want to be taught. You want to grow, ultimately. And everything that is challenging you, and how many times have you said it, it is a lesson. You are learning. He is close to you when your heart is broken. He is close to you when your spirit is crushed. Can you testify? So, many are the evils of the righteous. Many troubles do we have, but Hashem delivers them out of them all. He is guarding all his bones. No, not one of them is broken. Evil slays the wicked. Why? Because, like we said before, he has set the rules of righteousness, okay? And he has um, set them forth. If you choose to break the rules of righteousness, what happens? The punishment comes, but whose fault is it? It's our own. The evil slays the wicked. And those who hate righteousness are guilty. Hashem redeems the lives of his servants and not one of them, uh, and none of those taking refuge in him are guilty. Deuteronomy 6. So we know Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4. So we're going to get into Deuteronomy 6, 4. Here, O Israel, Hashem, our Elohim, Hashem is one. So one is not only oneness, but I think if we keep this in context of what is being said here and we continue to read, he says, do not go after other gods, okay? And we've talked about that before the last few weeks. If you know anything about what's going on during the time uh, that this was written, there were other gods, Okay? There are other gods. You can't say that he is the God of gods and not believe that there are other gods. There are other mighty ones. How many other gods are mentioned in the Torah? You have Kamosh, or in the Tanakh, you have Kamosh, you have Baal. He is fighting Baal, Baal continually. So, there are other gods. So, what this means is he is one, he is first. That's what that means. You put him first. So here, O Yisrael, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. So here, Hashem first. And we've talked about that before, coming out of, of religion, and coming out of the, the doctrines that we had had once, um, that you listen to him first. And I've had to test that many times over what is written versus what I've been taught. Can we testify of that? Okay. So if someone tells you, you can't keep the law, Deuteronomy 30 says you can. It's not impossible to do. He said, it's not far off from you. It's not impossible. So I got to a point where I was like, well, they're telling me this, but this says this. So which one do you hold on to? Which one are you are trying to hold on to? So um, hear, hear him first. Hear, O Israel, Hashem our Elohim, he is one. And you shall love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. How do you love? How do you love? You give him your attention. How do kids love their parents? You give them your attention. So notice him. That's what he wants. To notice him is to respect him. What does it say in Proverbs chapter three? Acknowledge him. In all your ways. Some people say it's science. <laughs> we choose to say it's God. Both, whether you believe it or not, both of them are a belief. Okay? And we've said this before. Uh, I know that there are science books written. I know that there is no telling how many different theories out there, but you were not there. Did you break those theories down? Did you uh, bring out your vials back and forth and check them? Okay. You are only depending on what was written by man. If you're look, and there are even, um, there are even pictures in, in books that are being taught in school that have been discredited. And that's what I'm going to tell you today too, is that it's both belief. They are both based on belief. You believe in the creation story? You weren't there to see it. It's based on belief. 
And this is what I this is one thing that I don't like about when it comes to the books that are written is that especially when it comes I'm just going to be candid with you I'm going to be vulnerable for a second when it comes to books that are written in another language uh, when it comes to books that are written in Greek or Hebrew we are only as smart as the person who wrote it okay and a lot of times when it comes to transferring over words from another language, there are not words that can testify of that word well enough. So we are only as smart as the person that has translated it. And if they have translated it with ill intention and we're holding on to that doctrine, it's not good. So... That's why it's important to study. That's why it's important to study the other languages. That's why it's important to know is because we are subject of the author. We are the subjects of the person that wrote this down. And it could be off. That's the reality. Okay. So. Continuing on here. Hearing is so much more important than uh, hearing is so much more important than speaking. When you hear something, you're learning something new. So hear, O Israel, Elohim is first. You shall love him with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart, and you shall impress them upon your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And it shall be when Hashem your Elohim brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Yitzhak, to Yaakov, to give you good, uh, great and good cities which you did not build, and houses filled with all kinds of goods which you did not feel, and wells dug which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant, and you shall eat and be satisfied. So what is the sum of this? He is trying to protect your generation. That's what he's doing. He's trying to protect your children. He's protecting your lineage. Okay? So he said, when you do this, I'm going to protect you and give you good. That's why he is giving you tangible things. He said, I am giving you the land and it's filled with storehouses and there's fruit there and, and land and houses, so on and so forth. He said, this is because I'm protecting you currently. That's what he's talking about. I'm going to give you life now and give life to your children. That's why you are teaching it or learning it and you're teaching it to others. That's what he's talking about. I'm preserving your family. So he said, when you are satisfied, be on guard, lest you forget Hashem who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from the house of bondage. So talk about the blessings of God. How do we see them? He, we see them in others. So how did God bring out Israel? Moses and Aaron. Okay, so we see the blessing of God through others. So if you want to see the blessings of God, recognize them through how he uses people in your life. I was blessed yesterday. Thanks for all the help. You and you. <laughs> and the ones that were in the background cheerleading. <laughs> so... That's the blessings of God to me. You know what another blessing of God to me is? The dogs aren't barking. <laughs> Stuff that's simple. He knows how to take care of us. Okay? That's the blessings of God. But you have to acknowledge him in your life. You have to respect him. That's that reverence. You see him, you notice him, and you see him through the work of others. Do you see God in your life? What a blessing. So, and little Judah, he helped too. <laughs> so, it's just good. Life is good. So, uh, recognize him. See him in your life. Be on guard, lest you forget Hashem who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from the house of bondage. So we've talked about many times uh, making connections and correlating between how can we uh, put ourselves in this position and what can we get out of this? He has delivered you from bondage many times, multiple times. He's going to continue to do that. So, revere Hashem. That is to notice Him. Give Him the respect that is due. 
acknowledge him in your life. You can do that every single day. When you pray over your meal or pray after your meal, you acknowledge God. Thank you for this food. When you're spending time with your family and you're having a great time, you acknowledge God. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your teachings, whatever it is. And on the other side of that, the flip side of that, God uses evil people in your life to teach you lessons also. But it is all of God. Every single bit of it. How do you love? How do you love him? How do you set him in your heart, in your soul, in your being? You give him your attention. What is due to him? Notice him, respect him, and acknowledge him. Reverence is him. Your Elohim and serve him and swear by his name. Do not go after other mighty ones. I'm connecting that back to verse four. Like we just said, there were other mighty ones. Do not go after other mighty ones, the mighty ones of the people who are all around. This next verse is going to make a lot more sense too. If we can acknowledge that truth that is written in the Torah, um, do not go after other mighty ones, the mighty ones of the people who are around you for Hashem, your Elohim is a jealous El. So why would he be jealous if there were not others? Okay. Uh, in your midst, lest the displeasure of uh, Hashem your Elohim burn against you and he shall destroy you from the face of the earth. So, there are lessons to be learned. Shema, listen with intent to obey. Okay? And I'm sure, 100%, I can testify that God has specifically told me things that are personal to me. Now, the place where people get uh, what the intent of this scripture is, is, and people have done that before, well, uh, Abraham did this, I need to do that too. So there was a specific calling to the story of Abraham here that was specific only for Abraham, okay? Each one of us have our own particular calling. Each one of us have our own particular service. Don't go back and try to recreate some of that stuff. Don't think that God is going to use you with the rod to split the sea. That was specifically made for Moses. But also don't think that God can't do miraculous things through you also. You know what I love about our peculiarity and our also uniqueness? Don't try to be like anybody else. You can have people that you look up to and that are, that are your mentor, but never say, I want to be like you. Okay? Because they are just as fallible as you are. How about you be the best version of yourself and love who you are? I don't want to be like anybody but me. And I want to serve my purpose in this life. And we'll talk about that when we get into Proverbs 1. So, how do you love? Give attention. You give your attention. You notice him. Do you notice God in your life? There's the sign. Do you notice him? Do you respect him? Do you acknowledge him? How do we disrespect our parents? By not listening. He wants your attention. He is watching you. His eyes are on the righteous, but his eyes are also on the wicked to cut them off of the earth. Why does he care? What is this for? He said, do this that you might live. That you might live. If you don't love your neighbor and you hate your neighbor, what's going to happen? Your neighbor might have ill will against you and come and kill you. Your life is not preserved. You want to do good to others and take care of others. So, that you might live. You and your children. Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1, and just verse 1. I love Proverbs. Why? Because I love wisdom. And I believe, as we're going to say on the side notes here, to love God is to love wisdom. To continue to want to learn. To continue to want to know. Understanding can be humble that you don't got it all figured out. But you want to figure out what's right for your life. So, I love Proverbs. I love all the writings. Uh, the Proverbs of Shalomoth, son of David, sovereign of Israel, for knowing wisdom, which is skill and discipline. What is discipline? Discipline is how you behave. Knowing how to behave correctly. 
For understanding the words of understanding. So you get insight to it. For receiving the discipline of wisdom. Now there are things that you have been taught in your life that you do not really understand until it becomes time to get it. And what I mean by that, there's probably a lot of stuff that your parents have told you, right? And it didn't make sense until you lived it, until it became real to you. That's when the light comes on. That is the understanding of understanding. They have blessed you with the knowledge they have gained, and now you get it. You cannot know the things of being a parent until you become a parent. Elbow. <laughs> okay. So, for understanding the words of understanding, for receiving the discipline of wisdom. So, uh, discipline is behavior, the behavior of skill. Righteousness, right ruling, and straightness. For giving insight to the simple. Too often we look with these eyes and not these eyes. The perception in the mind. We've got to look beyond what we see sometimes. That's insight. Knowledge and discretion. I love it. So, I looked up the... Title for the uh, looked up the definition for the word discretion. It is mesima, purpose, discretion, intent, device, and plot. So he says here, knowledge, verse four, for giving insight to the simple. What are these proverbs for? Giving insight to the simple, knowledge and purpose. To the young. It gives you intent. And there's a lot of good stuff in Proverbs. A lot of great stuff. So, knowledge and discretion to the young. The wise one hears and increases in learning, and the understanding one gets wise counsel. For understanding a proverb and a figure. Dark sayings, I think is what it says in the King James. The words of the wise and their riddles. There you go. Dark sayings is the riddles. The reverence of Hashem is the beginning of knowledge. So what is that? Reverence, respect, noticing him, acknowledging him. That's where wisdom begins. The reverence of Hashem is the beginning of knowledge, knowing fools despise wisdom and discipline. Let us turn to 1 Samuel chapter 1. There's a lot of good stuff, and when we went back over this this morning, I got more stuff that was in 1 Samuel, and I just really, really enjoyed it. First Samuel, chapter 1, verse 1. And there was a certain man of Ramathaim, Sophim, of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, son of Yerahom. Son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Suf, and, and a Mephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. Hannah is grace. Favor is what that name means. And the name of the other, Penani. That is Jewel. Okay? And as you continue on, the names are very important as you read in these, um, read in these stories. Uh, Pin, Pinana, she had children. So, of course, she was prized. Hannah did not have children, but he favored her. He loved her. So, and Pinana had children, but Hannah did not. She had no children. And this man went up from the city year by year to worship and to slaughter to a shem of host in Sh uh, Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, the Koinim of Hashem, were there. And when the day came for Elkanah to make an offering, he gave portions to Peninnah, his wife, be grieved and sorrowful. The second one, to make her irritable, is angry, provocation, frustration, sore. Made her grieve to frustration. Made her angry to provocation. If you read in the King James Version, and this is the best way that I can describe it, she was sore. She was sore. If you've had a long day's work, you ain't ready to do nothing but lay down. 
sit down. She was sore, troubled. And her adversary is who? The other wife. <laughs> the kids. Moreover, her rival also pervert, provoked her, I'm going to say pervert, provoked her greatly to make her irritable because Hashem had shut up her womb. And so he did, year by year. So what is that talking about? Her husband, every year, would go up there. This is what we got out of it this morning. Whenever she went up to the house of Hashem, she was provoked, so that she wept and did not eat. Now, every time that she was supposed to connect something good with going up and make an offering, all she had was trouble. Imagine having that perception. Imagine having that connection. I'm sure that she despised going up because she knew what was waiting for her at the offering. Imagine having that connection with God. Every time she went up, she was bitter. And her husband, Elkanah, said to Hannah, why do you weep? Men don't get it sometimes. <laughs> sometimes men just don't get it, okay? And I'm one of them. <laughs> so sometimes we just don't get it, okay? Her husband's like, why are you crying? Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? So everybody's going up. It's a festival, Everybody's eating and drinking. They're having a good time. But Hannah, why are you not having a good time? Because of the connection she made with going up to that sacrifice. It was a time of weeping for her. It was a sad time. It was not a good time for her. It was no joy in going up there for her. Look at the connection and how she connected that to God. Why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not better than 10,000 sons or 10 sons? And Hannah rose up after eating, probably didn't say none, <laughs> rose up after eating and drinking in Shiloh, uh, Shiloh with Eli, while Eli the Cohen was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the temple of God. And she was bitter in life. Why? We told you why. She made that connection with God. And prayed to Hashem and wept greatly. And she made a vow and said, O oh, Hashem of hosts, if you would indeed look on the affliction of your female servant and remember her and not forget your female servant, but shall give your female servant a male child, then I shall give him to Hashem all the days of his life and let no razor come upon his head. And it came to be as she kept on praying before Hashem that Eli was watching her mouth. So, no matter how righteous, no one is exempt from trouble, pain, and sorrow. The only thing that makes us different, the only thing that makes me different, is I have an outlet. I have a connection. We talked about it. Everybody wants to be recognized. We want to know that someone cares, and at this time, God sent Eli. Because God cared. Do you see the evidence in your life through the people in your life that God is there? I'm telling you, God is blessing you through the people that are in your life. Notice him. That's how you reverence him. You acknowledge him. God sent Eli. Isn't that wonderful? Out of all the things we can be sad about, innumerable, there are things you can thank God for. And Hannah spoke in her heart with her lips, uh, but only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard, so Eli thought she was drunk. So she just got up from the table, left, and then, because uh, she was sad, her husband just did not get it. So then Eli said to her, how long are you going to be drunk? Put your wine away from you. And Hannah, Hannah answered and said, no, my master, I am a woman pained in spirit. 
and I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my being before God. Do not take your, fem uh, do not take your female servant for a daughter of Belial, for it is out of my great concern and pro pro uh, provocation that I have spoken until now. And Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and Elohim of Israel give you your petition, which you have asked. That word petition is Sheila, request. Your petition, it literally says loan. He has loaned you this thing asked for. We want to know someone hears. We want to know someone recognizes. We just want someone to care. God cares. And what does he do? He sends people in your life that are going to care for you. I'm very thankful this morning. I'm very thankful. that I've got people in my life that care about me. I ain't cried in a long time, y'all. She got her petition. So, Job 38. Sometimes you feel like you don't deserve it too. Like you've done too much. All the bad things you've done. Job 38, probably one of my favorite chapters in Job. So uh, we talked about Job a little bit last week about the pride of Job, um, how he had seen himself and um, how God broke him down. And then we see as we get to Job 38 and God finally answers him. God answers him and talks to him. Uh, Job 38 verse one, then Hashem answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this? who darkens counsel by words without knowledge. One of my favorite responses by God. Who is the one that makes the purpose of God dark by words without knowledge? I know what I'm doing. You might not know what I'm doing. And as we continue on, sometimes you just got to trust. Sometimes you just got to have faith. Why do we feel like we've got to have it all figured out? We want meaning and purpose in our lives. Um, no matter how righteous, uh, no one is exempt from trouble and sorrow. We want to know someone hears, someone cares. God used Eli. Look for the hand of God in the interactions of humanity. Notice the people in your life. They are your blessings. We want answers. We want to make sense of it all. We want purpose and meaning. That's what Job was trying to do. He wanted to make sense of it. Why? Why? I want purpose and meaning. Now, I want to give you this quote from Viktor Frankl. When a man finds, and this is Job, when a man finds that it is his destiny to suffer, his unique opportunity lies in the way he bears his burden. They're crying too. <laughs> <laughs> they felt my pain. So I'll say that again. And this is Viktor Frankl. And you got to know who Viktor Frankl was. He was the one that was in the concentration camps and wrote this book. So he really had to suffer. Really had to suffer. Day in, day out, day out, hardly any peace. When a man finds that it is his destiny to suffer, his unique opportunity lies in the way he bears his burden. Victor Frankl. So we see Job here. Then Hashem answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is the one that makes the purpose of God dark by words 
without knowledge. Now gird up your loins like a man, and I ask you, and you answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. Don't you know what I'm doing? I mean, like, I was here from the beginning. I had wisdom. I created the earth. Don't you know who I am? I am God, and there is nothing that I do that does not serve a purpose for your life. Where were you? Sometimes we don't have to get it. We just have to trust. And I tell you, once trust is broken, it's hard to regain that. But I tell you, there is enough evidence for you to testify in your life that God is there. So why don't you trust him? Why don't you have faith? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you understand who appointed the, its measures, its measurements, if you know, or who stretched out the line upon it. So that's the measuring line. Upon what were its foundations sunk, who had laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy, or enclosed the sea with doors, when it burst forth and came from the womb, this is the reverence of God. Where were you? Where were you, Job? Sometimes you don't have to have all the answers, but we want to know that just someone cares. And you know what? God sent Job people who cared. They did care about him. They were his friends, but they didn't help him much. But they were trying. <laughs> they were trying in their current understanding until you get to the very last one. And he's like, this is what was wrong. God knows. God sees. Can you testify? Where were you, Joe? Trust and faith. Trust is something that's given. It's not something that's earned. You automatically give people the benefit of a doubt when, you, when it comes to trusting them. You trust them until it's broken. Trust is not something earned. It's just something that's given. And there is no reason for you not to trust in God for how he has blessed your life. So, Psalms 25, and we'll close out. Psalms 25, verse 1, To you, O Hashem, I lift up my being. O my Elohim, in you I have put my trust, my confidence, and my security. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those who are treacherous without cause be ashamed. Show me your ways. I want to know what you're doing. O oh, Hashem, teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the Elohim of my deliverance, my rescue. On you I wait all the day. Remember, O oh, Hashem, your compassion and your kindnesses for they are from everlasting. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my transgressions. According to your kindness, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Hashem, good and straight is Hashem. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. So he's getting you back in the line. He's getting you back in the flow. He guides the meek ones in right ruling. He teaches the meek ones his way. All the paths of Hashem are kindness and truth. Like we talked about before, he sends people in your life for a purpose. For a purpose that's good and bad. What you would consider to be good and bad. All the ways of Hashem are kindness and truth. I love it. It says, uh, it is the king's matter to search out a thing. I want to know why. He teaches the meek ones his way. All the paths of Hashem are kindness and truth. Those who guard his covenant and his witnesses. So that witness is a da. It is his witness, his testimony. I have a question this morning. Do you have a witness of the work of God in your life? All the paths of God are mercy and truth for you. I can't say that I don't see that now. Hindsight is 2020. The question I ask this morning is, can you testify for God? If they put you on the witness stand, what would you say? That's God in your life.
Everybody have a blessed Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom.